Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Uh, we are in the cycle of uh, weak men. Okay. As the saying goes, um, strong men make good times, good times make weak men, and weak men make hard times. Well, we are definitely in the cycle of weak men, you know, and it's a lot weaker than it's ever been, okay? It's much weaker than it's ever been. The earth has been getting weaker. The, the inhabitants, meaning the men, have been getting weaker in the earth as well okay um this is an image of different rappers you know with dresses on and things like that and even if they didn't have dresses on these men of today especially jake okay they're very effeminate man they're emotional they're hyper emotional they're they're uh, they're, they're, they're they're weak you know they don't know how to do things you know that men do they don't know how to you know how they would say pull themselves up, up by the bootstraps. The men of today in general are not in that spirit. Okay. So I want to get uh, Isaiah 24 and verse 4. It says the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The word languish means to be made feeble. Okay. Or to be made weak. Okay. Not only are they, they weaker physically, but they're also weaker spiritually. Okay, which is more important because the men of the ancient world, they were able to deal with situations. They were able to go through more hardship, you know, and of course, men could always go through more hard hardship than women. All right. And men that are living in the third world countries, they can go through more hardship than men that lived in that live in these cities. Okay. In these first world countries, because they're used to more uh, tribulation. All right says the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinances broken the everlasting covenant therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left okay this is why the judgment is coming all right the judgment is coming because you know, these people are um, are wicked, you know, and they're not following after the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, starting with the rulers of this world, which is Esau Edom, who he works with the left hand side. He works with Satan, you know, so his thing is to do the exact opposite of what the Heavenly Father um, requires, you see, and through him doing that, part of the result of that is there's a curse that's been put upon the earth. And the people, not only the food has become weak, but since the food has become weak, the people have become weak. The animals have become weak, have become smaller. All right. We're smaller. When you go to the ancient world, men were bigger. Men were much stronger. OK. Uh, this is a uh, second Esdras. Five in verse 52. Matter of fact, I'll start at verse um. In verse 50, it says, and I asked and said, seeing thou hast now given me the way I will proceed to speak before thee for our mother of whom thou hast told me that she is young, draweth now nigh unto age. He answered me and said, ask a woman that beareth children and she shall tell thee, say unto her, wherefore are unto they whom thou hast now brought forth? Like those that were before, but less in stature. Okay. Let's get this word stature. <clears throat> this is Satan boy. Give me one. Wow. Let's look up the word stature. Let's look up the word stature. Salakia. So you. you know. A, per, a person's natural height, 
Okay. All right. So, you know, it could be dealing with the height of a person. All right. But also dealing with the glory that we once had. You know, you no know, scriptures speak about the Nephilim, you know, the giants and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, you know, that's speaking about us. We are those that fell from our, our first estate. But also physically, we are weaker. Physically, we are less in stature. Okay. Um, I'm going to get one scripture to show that we are weaker than what we used to be. Second Samuel's twelve and thirty. <clears throat> um. Okay, this is um, this is Second Samuel twelve and twenty eight. It says, "Now therefore gather the rest of the people together, and encamp against the city, and take it, lest I take the city, and it be called after my name." And David gathered all the people together, and went to Rabbah, and and fought against it, and took it, and he took their king's crown from off his head. The weight thereof was a talent of gold and the precious stones. And it was set on in David's head and he brought forth the spoil of the of the city in great abundance. Now, let's look up this this word talent, OK, because talent is what a measurement. You know, when a person said when they said when they say a per person is talented, well, his spirit, you know, is weighty because of the gifts that he has. You know, he's not just a regular person. In other words, okay, it says talent, plain, uh, it says round, around district, environments, uh, around loaf, around weight, talent. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's look it up on Google. Okay, it says an antique weight talent was approximately... 26 kilos all right so a talent an attic weight talent or no, attic weight talent so it's about it's saying it's about 26 kilos 57 pounds approximately the mass of water of an amphora okay and a babylonian talent was about 30 kilos which is about 66 pounds okay so it's about 66 pounds according to them or 75, oh, well, let's look at this one. This one says, in the Old Testament, the word talent appears when describing how much gold the Israelites used to build the tabernacle. It was a, a unit of measurement for weighing precious metals like silver and gold and weighed about 75 pounds. The Israelites used uh, 29 talents of gold in constructing construction of the t of the tabernacle so it's about it's around 75 pounds okay so we're saying the king's crown was about 75 pounds just of gold 
and that's not including the precious met uh, the precious stones, man. All right, so that thing was about a hundred pounds that he had on his head. You see what I'm saying? How strong does, does your head and your neck have to be to hold a, a hundred pounds on your head all day? You have to be way stronger than the men of today. A man of today would have to train countless hours to hold that on his head for a few for a few seconds. You know? But in the ancient world, the king was, you know, or just regular men were able to hold these things on their head. Okay, that's why the saying goes heavy is the head that wears the crown. The crown were not were not uh were not were not light in the ancient world. Okay? It wasn't like wearing a baseball cap. So that's another proof that we are we are weaker than we are. Okay? You know, King David took the crown off of his head, right? And it said what? And he brought forth the spoils. Uh, Salakia. Excuse me. And he took the, their king's crown from off his head. The weight thereof was a talent of gold with the precious stones. And it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. You see that? And now let's get um, Ezekiel 4. Because this is a major reason why, you know, we've become weaker. Okay. It's based upon the devil being in control of our food. All right. And our water. Okay. That's a major, major part. It says, um, And I'll start at verse verse 11. It says, Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hen. From time to time shalt thou drink. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. And Yahweh said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Okay, so... That defiled bread that we're eating, right? Which is not, it, it lacks nutrients, you know? And sometimes, and a lot of times, they put a lot of chemicals and things in there that destroys your body, okay? And the fluoride in the water and different things that Esau puts in the water and the food that destroys your body and it weakens you, okay? Because fluoride was literally is used to make men docile, Okay? Because who who's the ones that start revolutions? Who's the ones that, you know, take over governments and things like that? It's men. So they need to weaken the men, which they've already done that. They need to weaken the men through what? Through the foods, through the water and things like that, right? Them being the devil, okay? They're going to do it by any means necessary, even if it destroys them and their own families, okay? Because Esau, he's a, he's a demon, all right? His whole thing is to, 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 to bring death and hell, okay? This is Psalm 62 and verse 4. It says, matter of fact, I'll start at verse 3. It says, how long will you imagine mischief against the man? All right. And that's mischief that they're doing, man. Okay. Everything that these Edomites are doing behind closed doors is mischief. Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a, a, bo a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. And you know what proves that it's... Um, Salakia, someone was calling me. Um, you know what? You know what proves that it was um, that it's a um. So like, uh, what was I saying? Man, I forgot what I was just saying. Something, man. It says I'll read it again. It says, "How long will ye imagine mischief against the man?" Right, and there's something that I just recently listened to. Right, what it would. There's certain uh, videos of Edomite children speaking about what their parents do, you know, and the different cults that they're in. And, you know, some of them are, are, are Freemasons and whatnot. 
and you know different you know sacrificing the children and things like that is a video i just finished watching the kid was the, and kids tell the truth because kids you know they just they don't even they don't even know it's wrong because they were taught it was it was okay so the way he's speaking you know he's telling the truth he's not just making it up and he's speaking in detail you know and he's saying that how they, they would put them children to death and babies to death and whatever and they would eat the flesh and bake it or whatever and sell the meat to um to um to these different uh, restaurants man you know mcdonald's being you know one of them starbucks so on and so forth so so esau's into a lot of wickedness man a lot of defilement of the breads that we've been eating and when we find out all these things man all right esau's gonna have hell to pay man okay it says ye shall be slain all of you as a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence they only consult to cast him down from his excellency they delight in lies they bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly salah okay so ultimately esau is looking to take jake down he's looking to bring jake to the lowest estate but at the same time he's bringing the rest of the edomites down okay the rest of these other nations down okay because he really doesn't care he has no regard for life all right you see what i'm saying as Habakkuk says, he is as death and is as hell and cannot be satisfied, man. All right. So he's not going to be satisfied. All right. So this is why the scriptures also say, um, lest these days should be shortened, there shall be no flesh left to be saved because you got a sadistic villain running the earth. OK. So anyways, with that, I just want to, you know, speak on that. Um, I'll give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations. Much love and respect to Akim out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom.